Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how I created this acrylic marble ombre effect. The technique I'll be using is perfect for those of you that want to change your design each month when it comes to having an infill. So let's just get right into it. I've already filed and done my cuticles, so I'm going to apply my acid free primer by Glitter Brows on all of my nails and then I'll wait for it to dry. I'll be using Glass Slipper, also by Glitter Bells, on Monomer by Sally's. I got my acrylic brush from Magpie Beauty and just look how dreamy it is. This is a size 8 brush. I normally use butterfly forms but as I've run out I'll be using these and they get the job done just as good. I'm going to start off by applying a medium sized bead from the tip of our natural nail and I'll be working the bead all the way down the nail form by tapping gently on top of it. You want to try and get this as thin as possible so just keep tapping making sure your edges are nice and neat. I'm then going to pick up a smaller bead and as you can see I'm applying it as near to the cuticle as possible. Try my best not to touch the skin, I'm then going to blend the bead around the area, fading it onto the tip we just sculpted. You'll find this easier if you have your nail facing downwards. This way you shouldn't flood the cuticle as that causes instant lifting. Make sure it's all nice and flat by gently tapping the acrylic with the belly of your brush. This is a close-up just so you get the right idea. We want to pick up a medium to large bead as this is the thumb and obviously it's a bigger nail therefore it needs more acrylic. Again, place it on the tip of our natural nail and making sure it's been placed all nice and flat we're going to work our edges first. When you're happy with the consistency we can start tapping gently with the belly of our brush giving ourselves that long ballerina shape keeping it all nice and flat with our edges all nice and tidy. Now we want to keep our nail facing downwards. This prevents it from flooding. And with a much smaller bead, we're going to place it as close to the cuticle as possible. While we're waiting for it to expand, we're going to work it around the cuticle just by gently patting it with the tip of our nail brush. Again, remember, don't touch the skin. Once we're happy with how it's looking, we can start fading it down towards the tip. Now that they're all dry, we can remove our nail forms. The reason why I sculpted this very thin layer is because next month, when I'll be needing an infill, I'll file away my old design with my e-file and this layer allows me to reapply a new design each time. Obviously, you would charge more for this technique as it consumes more of your time, but it also means that your client leaves with basically a fresh design each month. With the infill, before reapplying your new design, you would need to infill the clear base first and file it, but I can make a video on that if you guys would like me to, so I can explain it in more depth. Now, we're going to file this base we've just done. I'm using 100 and 180 grit from TMBL. Start off by filing the edges so that you're giving it a crisp shape, and afterwards, file the surface just to make sure that it really is all nice and flat. We're then going to remove the dust and check for any lumpy bumpy bits that would need flattening. Remember not to file too harshly because this, as I said, is a very thin layer, which means it is quite fragile. I'm then going to repeat this on every nail. Now that we're happy with our shape, we're going to reapply the acid-free primer all over the nail bed. 
I like doing this so that when I apply my acrylic design, it blends really nicely onto the base that we've just filed. Some nail technicians use clear acrylic instead of the primer, but I prefer it this way just so that I'm 100% sure that the base remains thin. After we've applied it, we'll have to wait a few seconds for it to dry. For my acrylic marbling, I'll be using white powder from Sally's, blue pastel from Glitter Bells, and Violet Skies also from Glitter Bells. When it comes to marbling, there are so many different ways you can do it. As you can see me doing here, I am using the double dip technique, which means you pick up a coloured bead and pick up another colour with that same bead and just play around with it until the effect is how you want it. You want to apply your design halfway down the nail, making sure you're leaving space for the pink ombre. We also want to make sure that the beginning of our marble design is also nice and flat so that when we need to fade our pink acrylic, it allows us to blend it flawlessly. As you can see here, you can't see the level difference between the base and the design. I have marbled all of my tips. We're going to grab the pink we've chosen and I'm going to be using Pinkabell Cover by Glitter Bells. Then want to pick up a medium sized bead and again apply it as close to the cuticle as possible while your finger is facing downwards. With the tip of our brush we're going to tap this bead into the cuticle without touching the skin. When you're happy with how the acrylic is looking near your cuticle, quite quickly you want to blend the rest of the bead down the nail. So by using the tip of your brush, you're going to fade it onto the marble design that you've created. I'm going to give you a close look on how I do this. As you can see, I'm placing the bead as close to the cuticle as possible. And with the tip of my brush, I'm just putting it into position. You don't need to brush it or drag it. You just need to push the bead into where you want it to go. With the tip of your brush, you're then going to blend the remaining acrylic halfway down to the nail. As you can see, I wasn't very happy with how this blend came. So I picked up another bead and I popped it on top just to make it a little bit more covered. You'll want to apply your pink thicker because this is going to be the apex of our nail. The apex is the highest point of our nail which then blends down to the tip so that then you don't get snapping and your nails are nice and strong. As you can see my pink is nice and high but we've got a dip in the tip of our nails and this is where our clear glass slipper comes back in and we're going to fill that gap in with our clear acrylic. So I'm going to pick up quite a medium sized bead, place it in the middle, blend one side towards the cuticle and blend the other side all the way down to the tip. Make sure your edges are still nice and crisp, just work it into the shape that you've already given your nail. As you can see, that's filled in nicely. We're going to wait a few minutes for them to dry and then when we think it's ready, we'll do the tappy check to see if they're dried. Then we're going to grab our 180 grit file and we're going to file all the edges and the surface. You want to be really careful while you're doing this because if you file too much, you'll file through the clear acrylic and damage the design. Obviously we can file on top of the nail because we've applied the clear acrylic so that it protects it, but just be careful anyway. Now that we're happy with our shapes, we're going to dust away all the excess powder and apply our top coat. 
I'm using Robbie Nails Top Coat. This is a non-tacky layer top coat, so it means I don't have to wipe off the tacky layer once they've been cured. I find this top coat is really good because it doesn't chip off my acrylic, which is a problem that I know a lot of technicians have. This is so strong, it works super well and it cures really quickly. And we're just going to apply that on all of our nails. I'm going to apply my cuticle oil. This is an almond oil from Sally's and I'm just going to massage it into my skin. And there you have it guys. I really hope this was helpful. I tried my real best to explain this into as much detail as possible. Please, if you enjoyed this or you found this helpful, don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on my tutorials. Thanks for watching.